Turkey tail mushrooms, otherwise known as Tremetis versicolor or Coriolis versicolor, is just one of the hundred species of mushrooms that have been researched for their medicinal properties. And as you know, we've already discussed reishi and lion's mane on this channel. In this video, I wanted to do a deep dive on turkey tail, which is a type of bracket fungi that forms thin circular structures that look like a leaf or like turkey feathers. We'll go over three fascinating ways how the compounds in turkey tail may actually play a role in modulating our immune system, as well as go over my favorite turkey tail products. So stay with me till the end. Also real quick guys, before we get started, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and turn the bell on next to it to stay up to date with new weekly videos. Now, if you've taken a hike in the woods, you've probably seen plenty of turkey tail mushrooms because they grow on fallen trees. They have a long history of use in Chinese traditional medicine, dating back to the 15th century during the Ming Dynasty in China. And the Japanese refer it to as Kaorataki, or cloud mushrooms, due to these images of swirling clouds on the mushroom itself that I find very fascinating. But what's even more intriguing is the two polysaccharides found within the swirls. Polysaccharide K, known as Crestin, or PSK, and polysaccharide peptides, or PSP. PSK and PSP are immunomodulators that stimulate and balance the immune system to help the body fight infection, cancer, and other diseases. An extensive breakdown of how exactly these polysaccharide peptides work need a separate video on its own, so that I can go over if you like, just comment down below, but really can be summarized in this report here. The most interesting finding was the use case of PSK. There is a reason why in Japan it has been used as a supportive therapy and cancer treatment for decades now. This includes not only breast cancer, but lung, gastric, pancreatic, and liver cancer as well, largely because of this peer-reviewed journal, Clinical Cancer Research, which, which looked at how novel agents like PSK may, may enhance the NK cell function and potentially improve the anti-tumor effect of trastuzumab, which is a medicine that targets cancer. But hold on, I thought we were talking about the immune system and not cancer. Yes, but here's what you gotta know. The immune system is one weapon we have against cancer. This is why immunotherapy is used as a form of medical treatment that activates your immune system to help fight cancer. Now, we just have to find out what extent these polysaccharide peptides like PSK can be used to achieve the most clinically significant results, which is not an overnight process. But I feel like we are headed in the right way. The second way in which turkey tail may boost the immune system is by enhancing gut health. And what do I mean? You see, our gut bugs interact with our immune cells and directly impact our immune responses. So by having a healthy balance of them is just one way to have a system when it's time to fight off the bad guys from coming in. And the way to achieve this is by acting as a prebiotic. Prebiotics are different than probiotics as they are non-living. Think of them as food for your probiotics. In the randomized control trial, you can see that it was concluded that turkey tail acts as a prebiotic to modulate human intestinal microbiome composition. Some other examples of important prebiotics are wheat, Jerusalem artichokes, onions, and leeks, jicama, and potatoes. These prebiotic foods contain starchy carbohydrates with large amount of fiber. These fibers aren't fully broken down right away, so when they finally reach the colon, they become fermented by the gut microbiome, and this is where the magic happens. The third way how turkey tail may play the immune system boosting role is through its impressive array of antioxidants, phenols and flavonoids to be exact, which is great since they reduce inflammation and stimulate the release of protective compounds, this study that looked at the acetylcholinesterase activity of turkey tail as the potential to be used as an adjunct to Alzheimer's disease treatments identified 35 phenolic compounds that can fight those free radicals which can change the instructions coded in a strand of DNA. And this is what we want to avoid. Free radicals cause electron theft which can radically alter your cell's structure or function. But just heads up, using the term antioxidant to refer to substances is pretty misleading actually. A better way to look at it is that it's a chemical property that acts as an electron donor, and some substances that act as antioxidants in one situation may actually be pro-oxidants or electron grabbers in a different situation. Another big mis misconception is that antioxidants are interchangeable. They aren't. Each one has unique chemical behaviors. In fact, chaga mushrooms, which we'll have a video on soon, 
has the most antioxidant activity followed by maitake, reishi, shiitake, lion's mane, then turkey tail. Now let's talk about how to take turkey tail, the best forms and amounts. As far as the mushroom itself goes, the turkey tail mushroom is edible, but it's pretty chewy. This is why you'll find it a lot in tea or powder or in a capsule form. You can even find it combined with other mushrooms as a supplement. Speaking of a supplement, here's my criteria. The first has to be organic because the soil matters. Secondly, made in the US. Thirdly, it should be third party tested for purity in the presence of glucan and polysaccharides. Those have to be there. And as far as the powder one goes to blend it in your smoothies, soups, or teas, the one by Micro Ingredients is a great one since they are not only organic and made in the US, but filler and GMO free, which is huge as well. And since no safety studies have established a specific dosage for taking turkey tail as an herbal supplement, it's best to start by taking small doses to see how it works with your body. The most common dose you'll find is about two grams a day. And most people who take turkey tail don't experience any side effects, but some that have been reported were bloating, constipation, and lower blood pressure. If you experience any of these side effects, stop taking the supplement immediately and contact your healthcare provider. Chemotherapy patients have reported side effects including nausea, vomiting, low white blood cell count, and liver problems when taking turkey tail. So with this one, while its benefits are promising, turkey tail has not been evaluated by the FDA. So always let your oncologist or doctor know your full list of supplements to make sure you are the right candidate for each of them. But I'm more curious to actually hear from you guys though. Let me know in the comments below. Also, Hit that subscribe button too if you found any value and I'll see you on the next one.